Hello, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to everyone, and thanks to be here. And welcome to Levagon, and welcome to the demo day of batch 189. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. I'm Guido, I'm from Italy. I guess you can tell from the accent. <laughs> and uh, I am a Levagon alumni. I was a student here in Bali during the first batch in January. And then I had the opportunity to join the team as a teacher assistant and now as a bootcamp manager. And I'm really very, very excited to be here tonight to introduce you five incredible applications that our students built in the last 10 days of our two month bootcamp. But before starting the main event of uh, tonight and uh, make the room for our students and their product, I would like to introduce you Levagon and I would like to tell you what happened here in this room in the last two months. So, Levagon. Levagon brings technical skills to creative people. Levagon is a coding bootcamp. But what does it mean that brings technical skills to creative people? It means that we teach our students to code, but at the same time, we teach them how to use their knowledge to transform their ideas into real product, into real application. That's why Levagon bridged the gap between technology, business, and creativity. Because we are focused on the coding skills, but at the same time, also on the product thinking phase, and finally, on the product building. Levagon has a huge community. In, uh, it's now present in, more, in 30 cities all over the world. And uh, in the last uh, six years, almost 4,000 alumni already successfully completed the course. And uh, 19 of them, you can see them, are here tonight. <laughs> Come on, applause, guys. Nineteen of them are here tonight to show you what they achieved after this boot camp, after two months of hard work. So, let's talk about the batch 189. Nineteen students from 21 to 35 years old, from 11 different countries, and with completely different backgrounds. We have uh, freshly graduated students, we have uh, teachers, designers, consultants. Really, I spent the last two months with them and I hear their story. And everyone has a completely different background, a completely different experience. And that is, I think it's incredible. But at the same time, also the reason why they are here were different. Some of them want to start a new career as web developers. Some of them want to go back to their previous job with a lot of new skills and maybe get a better role, a different position. Some students want to launch their own startup and others want to become freelancer, web developer and digital nomad. So different people, different backgrounds, but one thing in common. They come here in Bali two months ago to change their life and learn to code. So let's make a step back and go back to October 1st when they enter in this room for the first time. They started to learn Ruby, a programming language, and uh, after 10 days, they built their first software, and that's <laughs> incredible. Then databases, then again HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and finally Ruby on Rails. I mean, I know that there are some developers in the room and they know what does it mean. <laughs> but for non-developers, uh, believe me, behind every symbol on this graph, there are a lot of uh, concepts and a lot of things to learn. These students really made a great, great job. And uh, then halfway through the bootcamp, all the students pitch an idea for a product to build in the last two weeks of the bootcamp. 
the product that you're going to see tonight. Then they voted their favorite product and uh, five products were selected. Five products and five teams. So they spent the last three weeks of the bootcamp working in small teams of three or four students. And uh, even this, it's another step because one thing is to code alone, but one thing is to code in a team and work all together on the same application. There are some processes that you have to learn. There are, again, a lot of skills to add to the previous one. They start to work in a team, and in uh, five days, they built a clone of Airbnb, the famous platform. And then finally, in the last 10 days, they built the product that you're going to see in a while. So uh, big applause, please, to the, for the students. To summarize everything, two months, 360 hours, and 10,000 lines of code. And uh, to keep the energy high, I counted this morning 2,500 coffees. To stay healthy and fresh, 400 liters of coconut water. This, this is also a true <laughs> And finally, I don't know if we can tell, but few bintang in the night to <laughs> relax and to prepare for the next day. Has been, guys, a really, really long journey. And uh, now we are going to leave Bali with new skills, new opportunities, and a new mindset. You guys made it. You are now web developers. And uh, I'm super proud to say, and congratulations. I think now is your turn. It's time to show all your product. So I would like to introduce you our teacher, Eline, that uh, will help uh, to introduce every product. Thank you very much again for being here. And uh, yeah, enjoy the show. Okay, guys, so yeah, as, as Eileen said, uh, I'm a student at University College London, which is right in the center of London. And uh, right now, I'm in a lecture. It's about 12, and all I can think about is lunch. But as always, lunch at UCL is always a synonym of frustration because uh, oftentimes, I need to settle for some really bad food around campus from chains such as Starbucks, or I need to walk a very long time to go to a place that I like, or if I want to go to like a nice restaurant around, I'm going to pay like a very high price and wait long for something that's usually not very tasty. Fortunately, there's this new service that arrived at UCL called Kitchen. And what Kitchen is, basically, it's a virtual restaurant that produces one meal a day uh, to, for UCL students. And every day for lunch, during lunchtime, they send a team, uh, a team of, uh, of Kitchen employees called Kitchen Runners around UCL, and they load them up with, uh, with the meal of the day for them to be ready to hand out those meals to the student on the day, right? Uh, and they have, a, they have an admin, a guy driving around with a truck full of meals to fill up the employees as students come and, uh, and, uh, and buy the meals from, from the kitchen runners. So right now, I'm on my screen. I'm the, I'm, I'm the student. And uh, okay, so I, I land on the page and I see kitchen, the, fa the fastest, cheapest, and tastiest way to eat at UCL. Okay, pretty bold statement. Let's see what they're about. Uh, so I scroll down. Okay, and I, I, and I see some of their uh, meals that they've already uh, made. Okay, they look super tasty, and they got super good ratings, and then I see a few of their features and why I should choose them. So, okay, I see they make meals from 450, which is super cheap in central London. Uh, I see that, you know, the meal changes every day and that I can, uh, you know, uh, easily find uh, the, the closest kitchen. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I can see that uh, I've got an overview of the week where I can, uh, I can see the meal that, 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 that they are offering that, that day. I can see a presentation, like, uh, okay, I can see the description. Looks super tasty, and if I if I click on on, on other days, uh, I can I can pre-order for like a cheaper price, which is super nice, right? But right now I'm super hungry, and I want I want food right now. So I go on today's tab, Saturday 24, and I see today they they're offering four cheeses gnocchi, which is one of my favorite dish. dish so I'm super happy. Uh, I directly go and click on grab lunch, and and here I get a, a confirm your order page, which uh, you know I know I want to get that that food. It looks super tasty, so I'm just gonna create my order. 
I get an order summary, okay, I'm paying five pounds. Uh, I'll pay with my card now. And I just enter my card details, so. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now I've paid my meal, right? So now, yeah, I've paid the meal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I get I get redirected on on, on the home page where I can see uh, I can see free tabs, right? So first I can see instructions about uh, okay, find your closest kitchen runner on the map and scan your QR code to collect your meal. Bon appétit, right? So I see free tabs. The first one is a map. If I click on the second one, I can see my QR code, and on the third one I can see uh, my meal. You know, which I already know, and I can see that my status has changed to paid. So cool, I'm happy. I can go to the map again. And here, basically, what I get is an overview of, uh, of, of, the, of the kitchen runners around campus in real time. So if I click on the first one, I can see that uh, there's Merlin. Uh, who, he, he has 12 meals in, in his bag right now. And, uh, and, and, and he's, he was last updated just a few seconds ago. So basically, uh, we're tracking the, the, the employees in real time. And this updates as they move. And <laughs> they're eventually as well. So I, I, can, I can click on the second runner. Okay, so I see Steven, okay. And actually, Steven is, is really close to me right now. Uh, so, and I can see him, he's right there. Uh, <laughs> so I click on my QR code, right? And, and I go to him and show him my QR code. So this is Andrea, our, our kitchen runner for today. So he, go, so he go there and scans my QR code. Cool. <laughs> Cool, and now, now, now I can see that uh, my, my order has been, uh, has been picked up, I'm happy. Uh, I'm having the meal right now, uh, which is super tasty, so, uh, and I can actually directly go and rate it. So if I click on rate my meal, yeah, I'm gonna give it the five stars, you know, hands down, because it was super tasty, and that's gonna help the kitchen team uh, to, you know, to predict more like what, what meals are successful and, the, you know, for the future. So I'm happy now, I can uh, go back to the homepage, uh, I can go back to my lecture, I'm, I'm super happy. And I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Dre, who's going to show you more how the app looks from the administrative side, from the employee side. Yeah, hi. So I'm uh, an employee at uh, Kitchen, and uh, I do the admin for them. And um, as I can see, like, I did the QR scanning, and I validated that, indeed, his order was right. He ordered one meal. I can see his name. I can see um, what, what meal he bought. So, like, quite legit. So I, I give him his meal, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy about it. But um, I'm an admin as well, and so basically how it works is that all the runners, they're continuously walking around the campus, and they have a certain inventory, but they can only carry like this much, right? So I want to kind of govern my, uh, my employees, and I want to make sure that they're uh, like supplied with enough meals to serve all, this, the, all the students. So for that, I have like an admin panel where I can go to. On the admin panel, I can, go, I can do like uh, a few stuff. Uh, just to make sure that like, I can really manage my, my employees. So uh, the first thing I see is a map. And if I uh, sc scroll down like a little bit out of it, uh, if, I, if I scroll down a bit down the map, I see like, OK, indeed, they are at the moment we're in Changu. So the runners are in Changu. And I can hover over the, over the uh, location point, And I can see like, oh, this guy has this amount of inventory. He's at that moment, at that exact time. And I see like, oh. It's pretty low in inventory, so I can check out where he is, and I'm gonna go to the guy, and I'm gonna fill up, fill up his inventory. So I scroll down a bit, and I see like, oh, Steven, he's, a, he's an uh, employee, at, uh, he's a runner at, at, um, at Kitchen, and I see he only has two sandwiches left, right? So uh, I'm gonna go to him, and I, I give him 10 sandwiches. So I, I fill in the form, after I did it, I fill in the form, 10 sandwiches, and it's real life updated. Steven, on his application, you can see that his inventory got replenished, and I can at all time govern how many the employees have. Um, but there's some other stuff that I can do as well. Like uh, at this point, um, so how it basically works is like our students, they are our customers, right? But they can be runners as well for us. They can go around campus, and we can like we can uh, like um, make them runner for us, so that they deliver to other students as well. So I scroll down a little bit down my management panel. I see I can as well order meals and, 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 and plan the next week ahead and, and add diversity to our menu. But at this point, I just want to check out all our students we have. So I click on the, the customers button. And there I can see like a, an overview of all the users that we have. 
And at this point, I, can, I, I checked out um, 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 Roger's uh, profile. Roger just applied for, for us. I wanted to be a runner this week. So I can see that his profile is there, and he looked like a pretty good guy. So yeah, I'm going to make him a runner. And I click on the icon uh, to make him an employee. And we can directly see that his status changed. And from now on, he will be available on the map. He will have his own inventory. And he's basically a runner. Uh, so I can basically do everything that I need to do just to make sure that I can govern all my runners. And for me, my job is done. Like I'm an admin, and I did what I did. So. Uh, Thanks for that. I give back the word to you. OK, cool, guys. So uh, yeah, we're Kitchen. We're the cheapest, fastest, and tastiest way to eat at UCL. And thanks for having us. As humans, we all face and share the loss of a beloved person. And uh, it is always a painful and a long emotional process. Sometimes it can also be a painful process of organization. Hopefully and thankfully, moving on makes the process easier. Let me introduce you to Jonas, Stefan, and Victor for this project. So, death. Um, death is a, is a topic that most of us tend to avoid, um, yet it's a fact of life. We're all going to face it at some point. And some of you probably already experienced the, the loss of a, of a relative or a beloved one. But like, have you ever asked yourself what, what happens to the house of someone who died? Or what happens to the male? Uh, of someone who dies, or all the contracts related or connected to that, to that home. I think the fact that we're really avoiding, uh, or we tend to avoid this issue, leads to a lot of ambiguity and, and intransparency in this market. So for example, um, in Switzerland, I know on average a funeral costs around 14,000 US dollar. Another figure in the UK, like a basic funeral will set you back um, uh, 6,000 pounds on average, and a lot of people actually take up loans to, to finance this for their, for their relatives. And on top of that, um, you know, you face up to 200 different uh, steps uh, to, to bring um, the affairs of, of someone who died in order. So that's really a daunting process. But it's also, you know, when you're a business uh, offering services in this area, quite a process. You really have to think a lot and you really have to streamline a lot of things uh, in order to effectively um, um, like resolve these cases. So that's why um, we have created Moving On. It's an appli a web application that aims to really alleviate this pain um, and it does that by guiding the user through a very simple um, wizard that asks uh, like as few questions as needed and as many like, as, as required for the business to be effective. OK? Um, so this is um, our home page. And let's just create an order. And we press our button here. And, and we see we have a form, a simple form, you know, where we just add a few details. Um, And then I see uh, the services that are available. Um, uh, I would like house clearance. I would like mail forwarding, contract cancellations. Now, I want to save a little bit of time. Um, and we've already pre-filled an order for you. So we're just going to go there. And I want to show you a little bit um, the wizard. So we just go straight into editing this order. So you see. Now instead of, we see now the three services that, that, we, that we have clicked on. Now instead of having to deal with each and every step that involves house clearance myself, I basically just input uh, a few very simple uh, details. For example, like the, the number of rooms that this house had, uh, the floor area, um, like what type of house it was, was it an apartment, was it a like, uh, house? Um, so things like that, very, very few uh, and simple kind of information that we have to give. 
okay, we also ordered mail forwarding. So instead of really having to deal with all these things, we're just basically giving um, the address to which the mail is going to be forwarded to. And then we also ordered contract con cancellations. Instead of having to really go through all of the contracts that were connected to that home, we're just giving all the details here, so the type of contract and the provider, and that's it. Um, so we can submit our order here, uh, and we're going to get a little bit of an overview. Um, we see here uh, that so far none of the tasks have been completed. If we want to, we can go a little bit into the details where we see all the data that we've given to the platform. Now, as a user, that's more or less the end of the story, right? We don't want to, we don't want the user to, uh, to, to, to be con like confronted with, with more things. Um, in terms of, like from the business point of view, it looks a little bit different, right? The business has to deal with all this information and um, Jonas is going to present you a little bit the back end of the application. I'd like to hand over to you. Thanks, Steven. Uh, yeah, so we just saw the uh, flow of a user through our platform. Uh, and I'm, I'm putting on my business owner hat. And I'd like to walk you through what we as a business actually are doing with this information um, and, and how we can use it to effectively handle all of these tasks and, and take them for our customers. So we're already logged in as an admin, um, and we can go straight to our admin dashboard. Um, and what do I actually want to see here uh, in order to you know, effectively do my job? Uh, we saw that we just created an order uh, in the name of Eileen who was logged in, uh, so that showed up there. Um, I want to be able to see all of those current orders that came in. And because our business, uh, as Stephen mentioned, um, kind of evolves very much around uh, taking care of someone's home, I also want to know where are these homes actually physically located. And I have all of that information available right, right here on that map. Um, so now that I've kind of had my, my morning briefing, um, I, I know what the day holds, I want to move on uh, to actually solving some of those tasks for my customers. So I'm going to go to my Tasks tab, and I see an overview of all of the outstanding tasks. So if we just uh, uh, remember, an order that a, that a customer gives us basically is just a series of little painstaking or big, daunting, painstaking tasks. Um, and I'm going to go through them one by one. So uh, the first one here, um, house clearance, it's a big task. But let's say my team and I have worked on this all day, uh, and I've completed this task. Um, I can click that button, and that task will now be completed in my user dashboard. So my user can rest assured that everything has been taken care of here. So this is really the main way for me uh, as, the, as the business owner here to interact with my clients and also to handle all of the information, um, which is quite a lot that comes into my business, right? But you might recall that Stephen mentioned there are over or up to 200 steps involved in bringing someone's affair in order when somebody passes away. So what we're pr presenting here, the three services of, uh, you know, for example, clearing out someone's house and taking care of their mail and canceling some of their contracts, that's more of a starting point. So it'd be pretty good if, uh, moving on, we're able to learn from, from our customers what the most painful uh, processes are for them, the painful tasks to solve, and kind of grow the business flexibly. And it turns out the way we set up this business actually allows us to do exactly that. So let me walk you through that uh, with an example. Um, let's go to um, a tab we call uh, Managing Our Services. Um, so let's say I learned from working with our customers that another daunting task that uh, a lot of them face is that they're suddenly faced with the responsibility of taking care of a home before they decide, you know, do they want to sell it? Do they want to uh, keep it? Does the fa family will, uh, want to hold on to it? Um, and it can be a lot of work to have to clean that, to have to keep it in, um, in, in good shape. Um, and I feel that we as a business are actually in a really good position to help them with that. So, I want to go ahead and, um, and offer that service from now on. Uh, and all I have to do is go in, uh, provide some very basic information about the service I want to offer, give it a name, um, give it a little bit of a description. So in, in this case, I'm going to call it house maintenance. 
Um, I'm going to fill in a, a little bit of a description that my clients see when they come to our, uh, to our homepage and that they see in the, in the wizard. And um, I've just gone ahead and created that service. Uh, also, as a second step, because we have this wizard on the homepage, I'm going to have to actually create some information um, that I'm going to get from the user. So I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, put, put that in as well. Um, so here, I would like to know um, at what time they would start us to, to take care of the house. I'm going to say it's a date. Uh, and I'm going to create that, uh, that little question in our, in our wizard. Um, and I'm going to save that. And uh, I've actually just expanded our business a little bit. So let's go to our home page and maybe create one more order and actually see what that looks like from the user perspective. right? So we're going to go through this uh, uh, initial step again, fill in a few basic details. Um, and if we scroll down, we see that service we just created, house maintenance, now just showed up on our home page. <laughs> right? Um, and I can select it. I'll get to that wizard. Um, I can say, cool, I want you to start taking care of my house in a week from now. I can submit that, and my user just purchased that service from me. So. Let's recap that a little bit, because I, I think this is pretty cool. Two minutes ago, we had a website that didn't offer that service at all. Um, and without ever touching a single line of code, I was able to put that business uh, or put that service on our website um, and have clients interact with it. Um, and as a, as a small business you know, with no easy access to developers, this is actually pretty powerful to us. right? Um, and we can kind of take it one step further, because because of the flexibility built into the platform, um, it can actually be, be adapted to pretty much any small business owner that wants to offer customized services to their clients. Um, and it's just that we, at uh, moving on, decided to use it uh, in order to alleviate a, a process that can involve many, many uh, painstaking steps and make an intransparent process a little less intransparent and hopefully a little less painful. So, we're moving on, um, and thanks for having us. As I said, we are Roger and John, and we're here to talk about an issue that is uh, particularly important in this current day and era. As you can see by this fantastic graphic, we now live in the Trump or fake news era. So we'll go into the reason why we're solving this. So have you guys ever had this moment where you found it hard to believe a new story online? Yes. yes. Anyone? Oh, yeah. One or two? One or, yeah, yeah. So saying that, the problem we're trying to tackle, which is kind of important, we believe, is in today's media landscape, it's terribly overwhelming. There's so much information, it's noisy, it's biased, and there's right now no really simple way to navigate this information or to try and find a perspective on something else. So saying that, uh, we've worked on SIFT in the last uh, two weeks, I'd say, and it's a crowdsourced platform to help you gain perspective on any story. So saying that, we're going to start with a normal browsing experience. Uh, I don't know how you inform yourself, but I have a particular issue in the north of Ireland. I know there's an oil drilling issue called uh, the Woodburn oil drilling issue, I believe. Wood, Woodburn. And we're just going to look and see what we can find, right? So right now we can see that Woodburn has begun drilling. And uh, Infrastrata has ended operations, and there's been some protests. Now, this is just normal search. We can find out, we can search, and we can get anything that's a keyword. Cool. That's all well and good. Now, let's go through the SIFT experience of how you might be able to search things. We're going to go through two concepts. <laughs> and the first thing you'll notice is there's a new concept called topics. So basically, we have this aggregated way of collecting things, and we have three events. So let's go see what the events are in Woodburn. So strangely enough, there's the beginning of the ore drill, and we can see there's three articles. Uh, we see the company's called off the project, and we can see that PSNI is squandering one million on policing. So I'm starting to get an idea of this context, but that's all well and good. These are topics. We want to actually find some articles. So let's search for something interesting, maybe the Syrian civil war. This is, yeah, this is, it appears to be there. So let's check up the uprising, right? 
Cool, let's pick up the first article from this event. It's from Global News. And we can just see now that we have the Syrian civil war, the civil uprising, and we can start to read an article. But I know a little bit about this. I, I want to actually find out what else has happened. What's the next event? So let's check out the next event. Uh, Russia got involved, apparently. That's interesting. And there's an article here from the BBC. And we, as we can see, it's, it's not really rated too well. It's minus 20. That's not very good. So I'm going to look and see what other articles maybe exist around this topic. And strangely enough, there's something from Russia. Ooh, that's interesting. So let's check out what Russia, Russia Today has to say. It's a highly rated article. I'm very, very interested in possibly reading this. But right now, I'm not going to bore you with reading about this. But what I will do is actually I want to save and actually uh, follow this topic. So I'm going to follow the Syrian civil war and actually specifically the Russian intervention because I want to learn a little bit more about this as new topics come about. And saying that, let's just save the article because I want to read it later. Cool. Let's, let's check out where I've saved it, actually. I've, uh, I've, I've forgotten. Uh, strangely enough, there's that article which I can read when I want to come back to. Let's check out the follow list as well. So we have the Syrian civil war, strangely enough. Operations Euphrates, it's another Syrian-related topic. And World War II, because I have an obsession with war, apparently. So... Cool. So as you can see, this is a bit of the SIFT experience, which are two kind of core concepts. One is making it very easy for you to navigate now information and the concepts of topics and then the events that live underneath it. And more importantly, we now have an easier way to take an article and then see other perspectives from different publishers. So we have the BBC or Russia Today, also independent journalism. So we are SIFT and we're trying to help you help yourself, find different perspectives on news. Thank you. Finding a lawyer nowadays is a very slow and bureaucratic process. It is hard to find a lawyer that has the skills that matches your needs. Let me present you Law Hero, made by Jules, Chocat, Paul, and Merlin. Hello everyone, uh, so as you guys know, at one point in life, whether it's for good or for bad, uh, people find themselves in a situation where they have to deal with a lawyer. And for someone like myself that has no idea what he's doing, he's never actually dealt with a lawyer before, it can, it can be really hard for you to find the right fit. So the first thing, I let's take a step back. To give you some context, uh, I've been working for a French employer for the past two years, and I had a big fallout with the employer. He hasn't paid me for the past three months. So I need to consult someone. So the first thing any sane person would do, probably ask his friends and family for recommendations. But unfortunately, I travel. I'm a nomad, so I travel a lot, and uh, the recommendations did not fit my need. So what I did after that was I went to Google and searched for different options. Most of the websites I found just gave me a list of different uh, lawyers that didn't really fit my criteria. So until I actually ended up on Law Hero. Law Hero met my needs very precisely because what it does, it basically filters out through the database it has of lawyers to, meet my need, to match my need precisely. So the first thing I do is actually select the law field. So I have an issue with my employer. So you can click on a drop down of all the different law fields they offer. And then select the city, which is Paris. So after you press search, what happens is that you see a list of lawyers that actually meet those filters. But I want to dig even more deep. Like, I want to make sure that the lawyer I talk with understands and speaks English and is able to work remote. So I'm going to go ahead and filter down the options even further by pressing English and making sure that the lawyer is able to work remote. So this is the basic list I have of lawyers. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check their profile page just to get a better understanding of what they can offer me. I'm going to go ahead and press on Merlin's page or card. As you can see, Merlin. This is a background of Merlin, what he does. He's kind of expensive for me. He offers a fee of 500 for the first consultation. I think that's above my uh, budget. Uh, I'm going to check his reviews uh, just to make sure I'm not missing out a lot. OK, he got a three review from someone. Maybe I should see somewhere else. So I'm going to go back. Uh, I think Jules' uh, initial fee fits my, uh, helps is better for, fits my needs even better. So I'm going to go ahead and press on that. He speaks English, he specializes in what I need, which is uh, employment law, and his reviews are amazing. So if I scroll down, 
I see he got a bunch of reviews from people that dealt with the exact same issues as I, as I have, which is amazing. Um, so what I can do at this point is I can get all the information I need before even contacting Jules. So I save him, him some time, save myself some time, and make sure that the match is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and actually check the specialties just to make sure he fits my needs. Perfect. Fees, hourly. Cool. OK, great. So I can go ahead and start a request. So what this request feature does is makes, enables me to actually send a brief description of my case and reach out to Jules just so that he can actually understand my case better. So I'm going to do that, explain the situation briefly. And then what happens is that Jules, <laughs> so the nice thing about this is that if you're always uh, working remote or traveling, you can always make the payment online. For, this, uh, for the sake of this uh, pitch, I'm going to skip this and go for pay later. And what happens is that Jules, on the other, ha uh, other uh, hand, is receiving a request of my case. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jules. Nice. Thank you. So uh, as uh, Shokat said, I'm Jules, and I'm a lawyer, and I have uh, an account in uh, Low Hero, which is a great platform, and I check every day my dashboard. And uh, let's check it out together. Oh, cool. I have a new request. Um, it's from... Uh, He's from Shakat. Uh, apparently, he has some uh, employment law issues, which is my specialty, so <laughs> accept it. Uh, before, before that, please uh, uh, make sure that the, the case has been uh, saved. OK, cool. Uh, so for the, the first thing I'd like to do as a lawyer is to update the case, because uh, Shakat gave me like, uh, uh, some infos, but the first thing I want, to, I want to do is like to reassure him. So I would like to give him like uh, the price, duration, based on my experience, of course, and the chance of winning the case. Go up to the case. Okay, good. So if there's title and need help, okay, no problem. Go for the cost. <laughs> and I think based on my experience, that it's gonna cost like four thousand three hundred twenty-seven dollars. <laughs> it's like fair assessment, huh? It's okay. <laughs> And uh, based again on my experience, because I'm a, good, I'm a great lawyer, uh, 10 months. We'll be done. 82%. Uh, I, will, I will win this case for sure. <laughs> so cool. Update the case. But now I updated the case. Now Shoka doesn't know, or can still uh, consult his, uh, his profile, but I, I would like to, to, to add a message to it. So we have a private uh, uh, inbox between me and Shokat, where he's always aware about what is happening. And uh, please uh, tell him that, uh, cool, hi Shokat, thank you for your trust, I will deal with your case, no problem. I would like to check if uh, Shokat sent me some documents. Oh, cool, okay. So I have uh, I've already some, uh, some stuff to work on, cool, okay. So what you have just saw, guys, is uh, I'm a lawyer, and my uh, job is to defend cases. And uh, all the organization and stuff is like really painful for me. Um, thanks to Law Hero, um, I can now accurate uh, uh, leads, uh, uh, commercial leads, and I can focus on uh, what my, clients, uh, my, my client does. Well, I think you guys should all try it out. It definitely helped me, so please, Law Hero. Find and book the right lawyer online. Thank you. Have you ever heard about GitHub for the non-developers? Yeah, yes. Well, it's an online platform where developers work in teams and share their work. But the only problem is it's not very easy to have a visual overview of what they've been working on. So fortunately, Beedle introduces a powerful new visual way of showcasing developers' projects with Ilmar, Owen, Jetro, and William. So before I start, I would like to ask you to, for everyone to just have a quick look around to these people to, uh, that sit next to you and think who they are. Some of them, to be exact, 19 people in this room, 
just spent the last two months of their life tirelessly working on the products that you see today. So let's just give them a round of applause, everyone. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and um, over the past two months, we, we worked hard and um, we came very close as a group of 19 guys. And um, not in the way you think right now, in a different way. And unfortunately, in the next couple of days, our path will depart apart from another. So most of us will go back to our home countries where we came from. Some of us will stay here. But most of us will probably not see each other uh, in a very long time. But still, <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> but still, there are a lot of talented people in this room. And I personally would like to know what they will be working on in the next month or years to come. And unfortunately, in my opinion, there is no place or no platform online where I have the have an exact overview of what the people in this room are working on on their own time or what they're actually building. And if we, for example, go to LinkedIn, that most of you will probably know, and I'm, I hope you can see that, is um, <laughs> LinkedIn is a mess. There's spam, there's advertisement on the sites, uh, people have weird job titles, like what is a cryptocurrency advisor? <laughs> is that a real job? Uh, <laughs> And more and more people, they don't define what they do through their job title, through their fancy job title. They define their work by what they actually built. And so another way for developers actually to kind of talk to each other and communicate and show what they are working on is a page called GitHub that Elin just introduced very briefly. And it kind of is a platform that is focused on collaboration. So you can work on a certain project together in a team you can upload code, but it's not very visual. It's not really profile focused. So you can't really tell, OK, even though I've got a couple of repositories, what am I really working on? No one knows. And so what we thought is there must, there must be a platform online where I exactly know what my friends that I met in this amazing boot camp are working on after we are part and after we leave this place. So that's why we came up with Biddle. Biddle is a platform for developers to showcase their work. And how it works is you go to biddle.cc and you will end up on this landing page. And what it says to you is, what's your GitHub username? So if you're a developer, you most likely have GitHub because you need to manage your code, you need to upload your code, you need to share your code with other people. So what you can simply do is you can type in your username. In my, in my, uh, my case, it's HilmaX. You press Enter. And what it does? It creates a profile for you. And what it does, guys, on the back end, is it goes through your GitHub repository, so all the projects that you have live on your GitHub account, it goes through each line of code, it analyzes it, and it creates this graph and this profile for you based on the project that you actually build yourself. And rather than just having lines of code that represent your product, it actually visualizes for people to see what you've been working on. So for example, the first graph we see basically displays what I've been doing for the past 12 months. And as you can see, I think the resolution is not high enough, but Biddle, this very page, is the last project I've been working on. And if we, for example, click on here, the graph goes away, and you see the other projects I worked on before. And what this gives you is a visual representation of all the projects, how they were created, how they kind of died slowly because I wasn't really interested in it anymore, and how other projects rose from the ashes of these projects <laughs> and actually where I spent most of my time on. So this is the first graph we do. And if we scroll down, we get a complete summary of who I am as a developer. You see my GitHub username. You see the top language that I use through all, all my repositories on GitHub. So basically, what is the programming language that I use? Then you see the total commits that I made in the past 12 months. You see the number of projects that I've been working on. And on this visualization right here, you see the exact percentage of the different programming language that I used throughout all my projects 
based on how much I have used them in one project. So basically Ruby is, at, I, I use the programming language Ruby for more than half of my projects. I think the second one, if you hover over it, it should be HTML because I'm doing a lot of websites currently. So this is kind of like a summary of myself, what I'm working on. If we scroll down, what we see right here is basically individual projects that I did. We see what are those projects comprised of? What programming languages did I use when I created those? And I, I see, for example, I did a stupid coaching application. And uh, I don't know why it's a stupid title, but <laughs> I used three quarters of this application, I think, was actually written in Ruby. So you can kind of get a feeling that I myself would consider myself a Ruby developer by now. <laughs> okay, I think we got enough, but I don't only want to check out myself, right? <laughs> Let's check out some other developers because I want to work with other guys, but I, I want to know before I approach them what kind of projects they worked on, what kind of programming languages they use, so I know, okay, this guy might be a good fit for me. So my colleague Owen right here will just type in his GitHub handle, and yes, indeed, we see <laughs> the same graph, but slightly different. He worked in different projects. He also knows a lot about Ruby, so I think we might be a good match. We can both code on the same application, which is nice. And if you scroll down, you see his projects, Millman Airbnb, Rails, Mr. Cox, but wait. Didn't I, didn't I help you on this one? Yes, but, but I, I didn't see that on my, on my profile, right? But uh, then let's, let's check if it's actually true. So the, so the code is hosted on, uh, on your account, right? So let's go to GitHub real quick. Let's search for your username. Let's go down to users. And then we, we find you there. And I think if we then go to your top, top, bottom right, we go to your project, and then if you click on commits, you actually see right here oh, yeah. that yes, I did indeed help him on this project. <laughs> but, but, but wait, but wait it's, it's, it's not shown on my profile. Like, I want to get some credit, man. So let's go to my profile again. Oh, let's, let's claim my profile first, I would say. Because at the moment, I only had a visual representation of what I actually did. So we can actually authorize with GitHub right away. I don't need to type in a password. What I've done now, the profile was created, but the, the website didn't know that I owned this profile, right? But now it knows, because I registered through GitHub, that I actually own this profile. And what I can do now is I can import projects, I can edit projects, I can delete projects, and I can customize my profile to my needs. Maybe I don't want to show certain projects, and maybe I want to edit some descriptions, maybe edit some titles here and there, but let's, let's start off with this real stupid coaching app. It was really shit. Like, I really I spent a day on it, max. So let's get rid of it. Click on there, delete this project, it's gone. Gone. Wow. But, but, so now I actually want to get credit for the stuff. I, I really upgraded your readme file on your profile, so I, I really want to get credit for it. So let's get into my project. Let's type in the URL of the repository. Let's go to submit. And what it does in the background, it basically sends a request to the GitHub servers that are probably located somewhere in Europe or probably somewhere in America, and it fetches this information that visually displays it right here on this platform. So you can basically, for every project you ever contributed to, get your credit on this website and visualize to people what you actually did for it. So if we go back to, to the homepage, this was a very, very brief description of what we built here. There are a lot of features yet to come, uh, but I hope you like what you see. Um, again, Bill is a place for developers to showcase their work, and before, before we end, I just want to thank you, give, a, give a thank you to Will right there uh, and Jeffro. Who, where's Jeffro? Yeah. Right there. They did an amazing job on this project. I just want to say thank you, guys. We are almost at the end. I just would like to remind you that all of the projects you just saw have been built in just 10 days, and the students just had six weeks of coding experience. That's incredible. <laughs> it's time to say thank you, and uh, there are some people that I would like to thank. Some, but I would like to start from the protagonist of tonight, the, our student. Because I, I had the opportunity to spend my last two months with them, basically, watching them starting from scratch 
And when I say from scratch, it means that really almost all of them wrote their first line of code two months ago. So I watched them starting from scratch. I watched them increasing day by day. I watched them sometimes struggling. You know, the boot camp is intense. Some days are harder, some days uh, are easier. It was like a little bit sometimes a roller coaster. But the, the commitment, the energy, and the perseverance they put in this boot camp, they put in the last two months, were really amazing. And uh, guys, I really, really want to tell you that has been a great pleasure for me. It was my first experience as bootcamp manager and was a great pleasure for me to work with you. Really, thank you very much. Then uh, we have uh, an incredible classroom with uh, Ocean View. And I would like to say thank you to all the staff of the free hotel because they take care about, uh, of us, they help us and make everything easier. So thank you very much. <laughs> then the Bali team, starting from two person who had the idea almost one and a half years ago to bring uh, Levagon in Bali. And uh, still they make, they made and they make everything possible. So a big applause for Audrey and Dirk. <laughs> and finally, our coaches. So one by one, make some noise for uh, Elsa. <laughs> Albert. Eileen, and Inu. That's the end for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Guys, <laughs> so uh, guys, I really look forward to know your next plans. But wherever your uh, plans, whenever your project, whenever your dreams, I really wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, for tonight it's all. We can enjoy the evening, have some drinks. If you are interested in Levagon, we have uh, a bootcamp starting on January 7th then another one in April and another one in June. So you can talk with me, with Dirk, or you can uh, reach out on email or uh, Instagram or Facebook. Thank you very much again for being here and uh, wish you a great evening. Thanks.